Well, good morning, and welcome to Living Beyond Limits. You all know I'm Reverend Jennifer Spear. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you here. I'm so glad that you came to spend your morning with us and with each other. And for those of you who are joining us online, welcome also to our online service. And so let's begin the service today by reading our mission statement that's on the front of your bulletin. We are a sanctuary where people can discover and reveal the presence of God within their own being and experience their oneness with all life. Through the realization of this inner presence of love and peace, we give way to the evolutionary impulse of the divine and become a beneficial presence. So that's really what we're doing here at Living Beyond Limits is we are awakening to our own spiritual nature awakening to that one infinite and divine presence that expresses itself in and through and around everything that also expresses itself in and through and as our very own divine nature, in and through at us, out into this world. And when we are anchored in that awareness that peace lives within us all of the time, that love is innate to our own nature because of who and what we are, then we have access to those things, to peace and love and the truth of our own wholeness and the truth of our own power. Then when we are out in the world, we aren't such victims to what goes on out there because we are then in a place of power where we can choose. We can choose peace or love or wholeness or power regardless of what the world is saying to us, regardless of what the world is reflecting to us. In a world that is calling for peace and love, we can be that presence of peace and love. And so as we do that, we become a beneficial presence in our own life experience, but we also become a beneficial presence for everyone that we come in contact with and because we are all connected and part of this whole, we actually are a beneficial presence to the whole. And so I thank every single one of you for answering the call of your own spirit to be walking this path, to be bringing your spirit into this world in a way that is indeed beneficial. Thank you for that. Well, welcome to our New Year ritual today here as we set intentions for this coming year and let go of and leave behind the things that we don't want to bring into 2024. For as we are stepping into this new year, it's as if we are stepping into onto blank pages in a book that has not yet been written. And that book could be called The Story of Our Lives. And so those past chapters might be filled with things like soap opera drama or with comedy, maybe even a little bit of horror, some romance, some coming of age stories, and certainly probably a love story. But as we are stepping through this threshold into this new year, those pages have yet to be written on. And so that means then that the new year invites us to look at our heartfelt desires of what it is that we want to create, what it is that we want to do and have and be in 2024. Because I know every single one of us here, we want to be able to create those life of our desires. We want to be able to bring in form the things that it is that we want to do and be and have. And so Ernest Holmes said, the one creative power is expressing in you in a unique way, and it is always pressing against you, seeking a fuller outlet of its infinite possibilities. The desire arises out of the necessity of the universe to become self-expressed. So those desires that we have are our own greater yet to be to unfold. They are also life itself pressing against us to be experienced and expressed in a greater way than they have before. So it's kind of like also like breathing air though. If we want to breathe in new air that is filled with oxygen, we have to also expel 
and let go of, exhale that old stale air. The air that is no longer serving us, the air that is no longer supporting our thriving. So we must also, if we want to bring new things into our lives, we must also let those things go just like that stale air. We have to let go of the things that are no longer supporting our thriving the things that are no longer enabling us to experience the desires of our hearts and who it is that we want to be, the things that are no longer of use to us in creating that new dream. So releasing that which blocks us is one of the things that helps us experience and bring into form our heart's desires. And so I have a friend who was in a relationship and the relationship ended, they broke up, and because of the breakup, they needed to sell the house. And so she was really clear that she wanted the sale of the house to be smooth and easy. She also was very clear that as they went through the sale of that house, she wanted to be She wanted to have a sense of ease, and she wanted that relationship to feel peaceful and have a sense of ease around it. But you know what? Wanting it to be like that doesn't make it so. Wanting it to be like that doesn't necessarily make it happen. So what she realized actually is she looked at what it was that she needed to let go of, what she needed to exhale, expel, quit doing, in order to experience that kind of peace and ease that she wanted. And what she realized is that she had to let go of her anger. She had to let go of her resentment. She had to let go of talking about how wrong her ex is. She also had to let go of projecting a negative tone onto every single one of the emails that she read from her ex. Do you get that? All of those things are the things that are keeping her from experiencing the peace and the ease inside of herself, as well as the peace and the ease and the smoothness of selling that house. And so the title of my talk today is Breathe In, Breathe Out, as in breathe in the new and what it is that we desire to experience and to express, and breathe out the outdated, that which is not supporting us, that which has become obsolete according to our desires. And then we get to decide. We get to decide what it is that we're going to create in this coming year. And I think we do that through three things. I think we do that through gratitude and through intention setting and through release. In this thing called you, Ernest Holmes says, the law itself does nothing without a word or a thought or an idea. It has no impulsion of its own. Just as the empty lot next to your house produces nothing of itself, but is ever ready to produce what is planted, so the law of mind waits until it becomes impregnated with the creative word which sets it in motion. Your word differentiates the law. The law of life is not life itself, just as the engine is not the engineer. We are the engineer. We choose, we decide, and then we set that intention and our thinking becomes in alignment with what it is that we want. I think one of those things that keeps us from having the things that we desire, the things that we want to experience, is that we sometimes have habits, habits of thinking and habits of doing. We continue to think the same old things over and over again, and we continue to think limiting things over and over again. Just like my friend and those, th those thoughts about her ex, over and over again, how terrible this person is, how rotten it is, blah, 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 whatever the story was that was going on. We tend to think those same kind of limiting things that keep us, that have kept us from experiencing what it is we want already. So it behooves us to look at those habits of thinking and of doing and to decide if they are limiting us or not. 
what happens when we continue to do those same habits over and over is they kind of become like grooves in a record. And the more we think those same thoughts, the more we do those same things of our routine, every single day we get into a routine, the deeper the groove gets until it kind of becomes like a rut. And the deeper that groove is, the harder it is to get out of it. The more energy it takes, the more consciousness it takes, the more focus, the more energy to get out of what it is that we've been doing over and over again. But the result of climbing out of that deep groove then is creating something new rather than creating more of the same that we've been creating for years and years. The second thing I think that keeps us from experiencing our heart's desires is that sometimes that we perceive ourselves as being stuck. We think we're stuck in a job, we're stuck in a relationship, we're stuck in a neighborhood, we're stuck in whatever it is that we perceive ourselves as being stuck in. We think that we're stuck in whatever it is that we are experiencing now and whatever has been going on. Ernest Holmes, actually Raymond Charles Barker says, excuses and alibis, whoops, though sound at the human level, are idiotic at the spiritual level. Every alibi you make as to why you don't do something creative is sound at the material level. The spiritual level, however, it is the babbling of a child. The infinite doesn't know that you are limited. The infinite can't know that you aren't able to do what it is that you want to do. And Ernest Holmes says, the divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God-ordained. Bondage exists only in the human mind. We are free as soon as we recognize that there is no power to bind us except ourselves. It is only our beliefs and our limited thinking, our habits of thinking and doing, that keep us bound. So it takes getting clear about what it is that we want. It takes choosing, actually making a choice of how it is that we want to be or who it is that we want to be in the world. It takes making a choice of choosing what it is that we want to have and what it is that we want to do. It's once we make that choice, then we are actually facing in the direction of our desired destination, facing in the direction that we want to go. Because if you're not facing in the direction that you want to go, the chances are you'll never end up there. It's kind of like if you decide you want to go to Mount Rushmore, your car needs to face towards Mount Rushmore, otherwise you might end up in Florida. You have to actually face where it is that you want to go. And the last thing that keeps us from experiencing our heartfelt desires, and probably the biggest one, is that we lose our focus on what it is that we want or we give up before we actually get there. But keeping our focus on our intention and not giving up until we get there is like facing your car in the direction you want to go and pushing on the gas until you get there. So manifesting, like I said, I think is threefold. I think it begins with gratitude for what we love that we already have, for what we have and that we are in appreciation of, it is then setting an intention, and third, releasing the blocks or anything that is contrary to us actually arriving at that destination where we want to end up. And so let's begin this ritual today. And as we begin, we begin with gratitude, because gratitude opens our hearts. Gratitude creates within us an energy of openness so that we can actually receive more. It opens us to the good that is already at hand, and our gratitude actually affirms that good is here and good is now. And so you have a little green piece of paper in your program. I invite you to take that out and a pen. So I invite you to turn within for just a moment. Turn within to that place where you experience your own beingness. 
that place of stillness within you. That place where you can actually feel and sense your own spirit. The part of you that is still. The part of you that is eternal and whole. That light of your own beingness. And for a moment, reflect upon your life and the blessings and the good that fill your life. And now I invite you to reflect upon the past year. Is there anything in this last year that you are specifically grateful for? Perhaps certain people, or certain events, maybe gifts that you have received, tangible or intangible, Perhaps for things that you have learned, insights that you've gained, ways that you have changed. Or opportunities that you've had. And I invite you to go ahead and open your eyes and Write some of those down. Do you feel yourself being more open-hearted after that? How that shifts your energy? Makes you more open to receive even more because you're open. And so during the Roman Empire, when a person was released from prison, they were given a white stone. And that white stone they were to carry in their pocket that was proof that they had served their time and that they were beginning again with a clean slate. It was representative of that clean slate and also meant that you were a part of society and to receive all the benefits of being in that society. And so you also have a white stone. So I invite you to take that white stone out and you should have a felt pen also, marker. So I invite you again to close your eyes and to turn within to that place where you can sense and feel that you are one with the one. Where you can sense and feel that boundlessness is the truth. And that absolute potential is the energy that we each live and move and have our beingness within. That this life of the divine is the life that we are living. It is that which is seeking expression through you, pressing against you to express your heart's desires. And so I invite you to ask that place within you that knows only boundlessness, what is my heart's desire for this year? What is it that I want to do? Who is it that I want to be? What is it that I want to experience?
what is my intention for 2024? And when you're ready, I invite you to take your stone and to write one word on your stone that represents your intention. Okay, so I am, so we also have up here, as you know, so the next step is needing to release what is keeping you from experiencing that thing. So we have a pot of soil up here. And what I'm going to have you do is to write down your answer of what it is that needs to be released. And then I'm going to have you come up here and bury what it is that you're releasing in the soil. You can tear it up if you want and bury it so that it can be transformed by Mother Earth. I will bury it in my backyard so that it can be transformed into clean, pure energy. And so I invite you again then to turn within one more time. Recognizing that here deep within you is the absolute wisdom of the cosmos that infinite intelligence that knows all and is knowingness itself. For all is already contained within this one mind, this one consciousness of which we are each a part. That absolute wisdom is innate to our beingness. It is the knowingness of your soul. And so leaning into that, we ask that place within ourselves, what is it that must be released in order to be or do or have this thing? What must be released? Is there an attitude or a belief? Is it something that I've been doing? Is it perhaps a self-concept? Or maybe even a person in my life? Or a way of being? What must I release that has been keeping me from my greatest joy and my greatest life? And when you are ready, you have a little grayish piece of paper. You can write on there what you are willing to release. And so my invitation to you this week then is to know that what you have released is actually already been transformed, that it continues to be broken down by the earth and transformed. That is what is happening right now. Know that the universe supports you entirely in fulfilling whatever it is that are your heartfelt desires and dreams because that is life pressing against you. You are supported by the entire universe in creating that thing that calls to your heart. And to keep your intention at the forefront of your mind as you move through this year. And as a result, you'll be living a life that is blessed, a life that is bl a blessing to others, and a life where your heartfelt desires are your lived experience. And so blessings to every single one of you as we embark on 2024, creating the life of your heartfelt desires and creating your best life yet. Blessings to you. And so I invite you, I invite you to join me in an affirmative prayer. 
And so what I recognize is that actually every single one of us here today, we are here by divine appointment. For there is that within us which is the knower of the universe. And it speaks to our own heart and our own souls that it orchestrates all things on our behalf, and it has orchestrated life for us today so that we might be here letting go of what, what no longer serves us, so that we might be here today listening to the call of our own spirit, the call of divinity within us, the call of our deepest selves and our own greater yet to be that it is that which has spoken to our hearts and our minds today, and it is that which is unfolding itself through us today and tomorrow and the next day and the next throughout this year. And so I recognize that, yes, indeed, not only do we live and move and have our beingness within this presence, this essence, this absolute potentiality of the universe, but that it is also living itself in us and through us and as us. That we have come here as representatives of the infinite, representatives of love and peace and harmony, of growth and self-expression, as inspiration and light and goodness and peace and all of it that we are here already embodying those qualities of the infinite. And today, we have created a crack. We have created an opening so that might pour through us, into us, and out from us, into this world in a greater way than ever before. And so I recognize that each one of us is already blessed. We're living a life that is filled with grace and with inspiration a beckoning from within to be all that we have come here to be. And that is assured because that is the nature of spirit. I speak this word also not just about us, but about every other person on this planet, that there is something within their hearts and their souls that also is calling them to give way to the light that we are each and every one of us beings of light, whether we can see it or not. And that light is never diminished. That light is never dampened. That light is always present. And today in our openness, we are creating a greater opening for that light to shine itself in the world because we are saying yes to spirit. Yes to that potential. Yes to the good. And that calls to each person's heart and soul and is expressing itself now. As we begin this new year, a year of possibilities and potential, that comes forward in a greater way than ever before. And so I release this prayer into that creative law that always says yes, that always reflects back in this physical form exactly what we put into it. And so we put into it trust and faith and conviction, beauty and glory and magnificence. And for this I am grateful. And I release this and I invite you to join me in saying, and so it is. And so I actually only have a couple of invitations for you. One is that we are still doing me meal train for the bunches if you'd like to participate in that. We have prayer support after church. Our practitioners are happy to sit down and pray with you. If you would like prayer, will you raise your hand if you're a practitioner in this room? Happy to pray with you. We have a ministry of prayer box in the back. You can fill out a prayer request if you'd like, and we will support you during the week in prayer. We have prayer shawls. If you'd like to take a prayer shawl and gift it to someone who to, or to yourself, somebody that would like to be wrapped in that energy of prayer, the practitioners will pray over it for your specific desire before you leave, and then you can take it with you. And our Sunday talks are available. They come out Monday evening. Um, Jonathan is now editing them, so thank you, Jonathan, and posting, but nice. And just to follow us on our social media account, that helps us grow because more people that see it, 
because you're seeing it and it comes off of your feet also and that's how that works. I invite you to repeat after me. Good fills my life now. I recognize it. I savor it. I own it. I live it. And so it is.